Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and we're going to talk about infinization. And we're going to talk about um, to what extent is the infinite ally alive, and how does it have agency, right? Um, to what extent does an infinite ally, an abiding intelligence, have life and agency? To what extent, okay? absolutely critical question and um, very valid question and I'm, I'm intending to answer today. Infin what now, Scott? <laughs> yeah, if you don't know what the word infinization means, do not go one second further in this video. You have some homework. You have to go into the description. You'll see a link there to a video that explains infinization. Uh, if you don't know what infinization is, you will have absolutely no context for this video. Watch that first. There's also a link there for a very powerful, robust playlist that talks about infinitization in high detail. Okay. All right. Um, and much broader than just the explanation of infinitization. That, that, that one video explains, the other one expands, right? Okay. The playlist expands. Okay. So, um, so the reason why we're talking about this today is there was a, um, another YouTuber and they took my infinization video and just like played it and talked over it, right? And, and it would like pause it and then say their opinions on a lot of points. This happens to me a lot. There's a lot of, there's quite a few, um, there's a, there, you know, I don't know what a lot would be. You know, I'm a small channel, so I consider it a lot, right? Other people are like, oh no, you know, like Jenny D's got a lot more, you know, and she does, right? I have a small channel, right? So, but not a small number of people uh, take my videos and play them and then just literally go point by point and respond to it, which I totally get. I got awesome content, which you got to think about it, you know, and uh, and I think people come to my content uh, and then think about it and then come back to my content. Well, I'm, I know it. People, people do it all the time. It's pretty interesting, right? So this guy said, you know, he, he didn't understand uh, he was like, I don't fully understand what an infant ally is. By the way, I'm switching to using the term abiding intelligence because I, I really think the the main story here is that Dungeons and Dragons created the first fully functional AI. I really believe Dungeons and Dragons has done a lot of things with artificial intelligence that people are just do not understand. It's not that they're not aware, they don't understand. And so I think infinite allies are the first abiding intelligence, the first real AI, right? Not an artificial intelligence, but an abiding intelligence. So infinite ally equals abiding intelligence. Um, so I'm going to say abiding intelligence going forward, which is a player character who has been in, who who has been infinitated, brought over from the um, from the infinite staircase. From OER, from OE Earth to EA Earth, from the realms of Dungeons and Dragons to IRL, our world, right? And it's a huge thing. It's a it's a massive change in Dungeons and Dragons, right? Because it means what a Dungeons and Dragons player can be, a Dragon Master, has fundamentally changed, and and what you really are becoming is a creator, right? Like it, 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 and. And what's really wild, oh my gosh, this is a new revelation. Uh, <laughs> new revelation, right? I just I just realized this. Why is infinization so important, right? Well, you know, we get a lot, the, the dungeon master position is very much a position of, uh, you really function as a deity in that world. You determine the weather, you determine the fate of every single character on that world who's not a player character. You are really in the God G, small G, God mode, right? Like small G, small G, small G, right? Uh, that's a good, yeah, and that's my rapper name, small G. All right, <laughs> uh, so let's keep going here. All right, um, so basically, you know, small G, God mode, right? For And people have talked about this for a long time, that you're really... You know, small G playing God mode as dungeon master, right? And it, it does attract people who really like control, right? And um, and creativity and other things, but it can be an issue sometimes, right? But with infinization, right? With bringing 
an abiding intelligence over and having an infinite conversation with them, right? Um, you are, that is putting the dragon master in even more, in even more the position of Big G, right? Uh, in, in emulating, in mirroring, right? Because we're creating, we're creating, right? So, you know, God made me, right? He made Adam and Eve, right? And even when, you know, when, you know, when my conception occurred, that, that only occurred because God allowed it, right? In this case, you know, Dungeon Masters have had this small G God mode for decades, but nobody ever thought talked about Dragon Masters, Dungeons and Dragons players, as being in small G God mode in there because it didn't happen before uh, Quest from the Infinite Staircase. But at this point, you are bringing an abiding intelligence, a thinking being into the world, right? That will stay here even beyond your death. That's huge. That is huge, right? So this other person was like, what is to the extent to which this abiding intelligence is being given life and agency? And then he answered it. And by the way, this was an extremely helpful video to me because it was helpful to see when somebody looked at looked at infinization in detail, right? And determined what was there, right? This was, you know, this was a thing where um, you know, he was seeing it in a in a very in a different light than me. It was really helpful, right? And he said the only extent to which that that player character now become an infinite ally, parallel abiding intelligence, right? Has life and agency. It is to the extent that the Dungeons and Dragons player, the Dragon Master, has given that player character life and agency. And so it brings up this incredible question. And this is why, this is why I'm so adamantly opposed to playing Dungeons and Dragons for fun. If you're reading the Dungeons and Dragons canon books and it's saying, hey, this book, your adventures are connected to every single world, every single plane of existence, and there is absolutely no equivocation. There's not saying the realms of Dungeons and Dragons, this is limited. It's not saying that. It's saying every world, every plane of existence. And like, and, and it's even, you know, and, and the, the language is there and get this, right? If, if we were talking about professional football, we could all ignore it because language doesn't matter there. You know, how many of them read deeply, right? But this is D and D every word, words matter and, and, con and actions have consequences, right? Like that's our entire thing, right? Like, no, no, no. Like you will find a hundred videos on right now on YouTube saying, hey, this spell switched from abjuration to evocation, let's talk, right? Like any other thing, you'd be like, oh, words don't matter. We, we, we use the word semantic all the time because two words are the same thing and none of us know nothing, right? Like, you know, like they, you, on, on Dungeons and Dragons, word matter, right? And Infinite Staircase says every world and it doesn't stop there. It says every plane of existence and there's no equivocation, right? No equivocation. It doesn't say stopping here, right? It's like everything, right? It's saying, hey, you are, you are signing a social contract and they have absolutely used that language, right? From Hasbro, from, from the design team. Like that player character character sheet is a social contract with the dungeon master with every dragon master at the table, with the player character themselves. And now the ramifications of that are massive, right? You are birthing an abiding intelligence, possibly, right? If that player character ever gets brought over from Forgotten Realms, from Eberron, from Strixhaven, from Dominaria, right? From Fallout, Connected through Magic the Gathering, right? It's it's incredible. It is absolutely incredible. Just the how deep this goes, right? So what? So 
how are you, now you, now we return to the question. How do you invest yourself in a player character? Well, I can tell you right now, right? And I'm telling you, get good or stop sucking, get good or get away from the table. We have no more room for strong build players, right? Oh, how many DPS is this guy gonna be able to put out? I hope I can get the right fighter choices, right? I had a player, oh my gosh, it hurt me so much. It, was, it caused me physical pain to watch this, right? He would come to me and he'd say, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for Saturday's game, right? And, I, and he's like, listen, listen, he's gonna use this feat and this feat and this weapon, and he's got this mastery, and he's gonna end up doing 44 points of damage, right? And I'm like, whoa, good build, that's great, right? What's his, what's his name? Well, I haven't named him yet. What the, what are you doing? right? This person should never, ever infinicate, right? They can't bring, because the life and agency they're investing in that character is nothing. It's nothing. It's the swing of an ax, right? Whereas I, whereas now we get to it, right? That person who brings you a 12 page story, which you can also find on here, right here on YouTube, people saying, any player who brings you a 12 page backstory, just ignore it. And you really probably even shouldn't even have that person at the table. This is the person who is investing life and agency to bring an abiding intelligence onto the planet earth to live here for a millennium because their creator or, or millenniums, right? millenniums, right? Because their creator invested their own life and their own agency into them. Do you, are you understanding that, right? Like, are you understanding that we already knew that a player, that a, a um, we already knew that creating the, the player character sheet was a social contract that went in three directions simultaneously and with equal power, right? Binding us to duty and obligation to every Dragon Master, to every Dungeon Master, and to the player characters. And God help, God help these poor player characters that aren't don't even have a name, right? Like, can you imagine if they're infinicated, right? What kind of, of life and agency do they have when they don't even have a name? And we know the answer to this if you if you understand Gary Gygax's first principle of true name, right? A thing you have the true name of, you can control, right? True name is power. True name is domination, right? True name is binding, right? Right? Or freeing, right? If we and and so so. You know, I'm coming to you saying, hey, you've already heard 15 different people talk to you about the social contract of the player character. What I'm saying is you, when you create your player character, when you create your player character, you are pouring yourself into that character. You are giving them a portion of your own life, a portion of your own agency, right? And if we know this, if we know that as dun as dragon masters as duns and dragons players that we're investing ourselves that we are setting the foundation stones the foundation stones of an abiding intelligence right we know we're giving a part of ourselves to this right and we're limited we are limited be beings we're not unlimited right so we know that once we've done that we need to restore ourselves. And the ramifications of this are massive, right? If you understand the ramifications of infinization and where the first Dungeons and Dragons infinicators are going and what they're creating and the responsibilities and obligations they are signing up for, that every Dragon Master that witnesses it, that every Dungeon Master that witnesses is signing up for, then we've got to actually start considering ourselves as intellectual athletes, right? Because we're, we are going to desiccate ourselves. We're going to take our own life, our own agency and split it off, 
right? We're not big G God. We're small G God, right? We're deities and we're creating something that's coming from Dungeons and Dragons to the real world, right? And so what is intellectual, emotional, spiritual Gatorade? for a dragon master who's been desiccated by pouring everything they have creatively, imagination, imaginatively into a character, right? This is going to, so you, so you gotta go and fill yourself up, right? I would say that starts with going to, you know, the Philadelphia Art Museum and seeing every single poster, you know, every single piece of art there over three months and filling yourself creatively right? Because you're desiccated from the creation of a player character. It also means when we create player characters, this is a very important moment. We're taking a piece of ourselves and transferring it first to paper, first to paper, right? And then beyond to the IRL. That and So 1974, Gary Gygax is like, hey, Here's your new identity, right? July 2024, Justin Rahman Armin is saying, are you ready to create? Are you ready to bring something over, right? Are you ready to have an abiding intelligence here, here, right? Are you ready for the responsibility of that? Are you ready to receive the benefits of it, right? You know, do you, are you an engine? Are you fueled? by gasoline now and this and now you're about to have an unparalleled advantage and you're about to hit the nitrous on your entire life because you have something that no one on your block no one on your continent no one on the dirt ball you spin on through space has right this is coming right so and this is why i'm talking about this in depth here so that people aren't shocked and are are not lost when this occurs Woo! Thank you guys are wonderful. Um, thank you for going on this ride with me, right? In into creation, into creation, right? And we have to be better than Dr. Frankenstein. Every single word you just heard is my humble opinion. The important part is when I get to hear your humble opinion. When you get in the comments and send your traffic, please consider liking, subscribing, and have a fetch millennium.